Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Yang Another very, very, very important time in our life that is today. Mm -hmm. It's a gift to us. Mm -hmm. Welcome to The Breakfast. Welcome to The Breakfast. It's Thursday the 25th of July 2024. And for some people, it will say it's payday, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, a lot of others are anticipating uh, mm -hmm. pay at this moment. So, mm -hmm. you know, be careful how you talk to someone. You might just end up in jail because there's so much money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyways, on today's breakfast show, we're looking at several hot topics. We'll be discussing RG Carlos Six part time legislature to cut costs of governance. Another topic we'll be discussing much later in the show is why government officials do not want protests. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Business is all about relationships. How well you build them determines how well they build your business. And that is by Brad Sugars, chairman and founder, Action Coach. Business is all about relationships. How well you build them determines how well they build your business and i think this just talks about human capital it is important you know a lot of time people think the resources that you have is just money but connections matter a lot human capital matters a lot because um how well you build those relationships is how well your business is going to thrive so if you're a nasty boss someone who doesn't care who lacks empathy who is in kind the chances of the people who work for you having to nourish your business is very slim. The only reason why they're probably still there is just because it's what pays the bills at that time. But the moment they find something better, especially um, jobs that have better welfare packages, they're going to go there. So how you treat the people who work for you, you know, determines how well your business would just be successful yeah a wise person once said that some people are so poor that all they have is money mm -hmm. so you think that you are rich because you have money you you mm -hmm. have you have nothing mm -hmm. because if you have all the money and there's nobody who is ready to sacrifice one thing or the other for mm -hmm. you that your money amounts to nothing you yeah. will get, end up being the only one doing the same things that you could have hired people to do mm -hmm. and sometimes it could even cost you your life mm -hmm. i saw a story yesterday or so how um, a house help was, was the phone was seized as a form of punishment. I don't know what happened before it got to that point. Mm -hmm. She may be uh, at, the, at fault. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the resolve of that, of that house help was to poison the food of the entire family. Oh my goodness. Just because of that. So if this boss, I'm not saying that's what the case mm -hmm. is, but let's just assume that the boss was very nasty mm -hmm. and then it culminated in their seizing the phone of this woman. There's nothing to remember mm -hmm. that you have done in the past that will make that person say, okay, because of this. No, you know how people just, when they think of the things you've done, they forget all of the good. Yeah, It's well, just that one bad. It's like, oh, you are nasty to me. Because of that, I'm going to do this. But when it gets to the extreme, most times it's a buildup of things that has happened over that time. Have been happening over time. I'm not saying that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying uh, the It's even the right, something. yeah. But you see, sometimes things like this happen. So be nice because you don't know where that niceness will help you. Sometimes mm -hmm. the people who are your gate men today are the ones that will save you from yeah. something tomorrow. Your not drivers. Maybe giving you a contract or anything, but mm -hmm. they will save you. They can save your life. Yes, some, sometime, somewhere. Uh, there, are, there are bosses that are, that are so nice that even when money is not coming in, you, salaries are not paid as at when due, people still stay. Mm -hmm. because they know that okay it's a relationship yeah, they, they understand mm -hmm. you, you, that's where you find understanding workers <laughs> it's not <laughs> only boyfriend or girlfriend like i understand you find <laughs> understanding workers mm. it comes from a kind of boss that you have mm -hmm. but if the boss is nasty the slightest opportunity you're gone mm -hmm. it's a relationship so it's important that you start to nurture those relationships a lot of times we always want to nurture the relationships with our spouses our partners um, our family our friends but even in business you should also nurture those relationships because that would just determine how successful your business would turn out to be all right, that's it for our quote of the day. We'll move over to some top trending stories this morning. This first one says Meta deletes 63,000 accounts in Yahoo Boys crackdown.
Meta um, platforms incorporated removed 63,000 accounts associated with the Yahoo Boys scam group, targeting financial extortion and blackmail. The crackdown detailed in Meta's quarter one 2024 advisorial threat report identified 2,500 accounts primarily targeting adult men in the U.S. Meta used advanced technical signals and comprehensive investigations to identify and disable these accounts, enhancing automated detection system. The company found that while most scams were unsuccessful, some targeted minors and these cases were reported to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Meta also removed 7,200 um, scam-related assets in Nigeria, including Facebook accounts, pages, and groups, and continue to work with law enforcement to prevent the return of these scammers. Well, it's quite unfortunate that Nigeria is known in the news for um, things like this. When, when you think of Yahoo Boys, when you think of scam, um, 419, most times you hear of Yahoo, you hear of Nigerians, you know, perpetuating these crimes, right? But I'm happy that Meta is doing something, working with law enforcement around the world and identifying, because most times they start from Facebook, they start from Twitter, they start from Instagram, they start from those, these social media platforms, and then they start to stalk people, know more about you, get more information, and see if you're vulnerable enough for them to you know just attack um so it's good that meta is checking out these accounts and trying to pull them down but our own government um agencies here i think this is where technology comes in it's not just busting into hotels or people's homes and saying oh we think you're having a yahoo party or we think you're um you're a yahoo boy you must see you must investigate you must see things that they've done for you to be able to say, okay, when we look at the thread of these messages, when we look at um, things that have been sent, correspondence back and forth, okay, these are the reasons why we believe that this person might be a Yahoo boy in court. And then you start to crack down. But you hear of EFCC just going to places, busting people, arresting people that have no business. They arrest you before being... they start investigation. Yeah, that was a problem. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people who we count as part of the statistics of people who are Yahoo boys may not necessarily be Yahoo mm -hmm. boys. It's, it's just like when we had COVID-19, you have, have a headache, you are down with COVID. Mm. You have a leg injury, you're down with COVID and all that. We don't keep data of the actual things. You investigate and find out this person is actually doing that. There are stages that if uh, a crime is about to be committed, there are stages it will get to, and then the, the law enforcement people will, will know. They will mm -hmm. flag it off as a, a scam alert or something mm -hmm. uh, like that but here you find people scamming others transferring money to particular accounts mm -hmm. and then even if you report nobody takes any action mm -hmm. there is no account that money enters that the people the authorities cannot know yes. there's no account that is trying that to even do... goes to kidnapping kidnappers and you know people who send money around for um gun um having to buy guns having to kidnap people They're, because you can trace these things especially when we now live in a world that technology is at our beck and call it's an, in our face with a, like our fingertips we can easily reach out to technology you're seeing the rise of ai you can see what ai is doing but in nigeria it's almost like you know how they say you're you're innocent until proven guilty, guilty. No, not in nigeria. nigeria it's almost like you're guilty until proven until innocent. proven and the chances that you're going to be proven innocent is quite slim. there are a lot of people in prison today because uh, nobody even cares about investigating anything yeah. about them you're just strolling back from work or somewhere wrong place wrong and time then, and it's not even right, it, it could wrong. even be the right place <laughs> yeah i know but it may not even be wrong but uh, the wrong people at the right place mm -hmm. you know they are, they are the, the people who will come arrest you and just say that uh, you have broken the law you have done this and that. they bundle you into that but even as i agree that there are a lot of people who are scamming others yeah. i'd like to also state that this yahoo even though we have the nickname for it mm -hmm. it's not the only country nigeria is not the only yes. country it's just that we ourselves are the ones that blow up and say that our people are so bad, terribly, terribly bad, that uh, social media carries it. Everybody in the world sees it. Mm -hmm. For instance, 
there's no gun violence if you compare Nigeria to America. Of course People not. People die every day mm -hmm. without any From provocation. Gun violence, yeah. Imagine the person who tried to assassinate the president, uh, the former president. What did mm -hmm. Trump do to him? In Nigeria, I'm not sure that will just happen. Mm. Someone is on a rally and somebody just climbs up. He's not part of a group. You're, you're even going too just far. That how, about, how about school children? They're in school yes. and some random psychopath will just take a gun and start shooting sporadically, killing innocent children. What, what statement do you want to make? But some of these things, the press doesn't carry it as much mm -hmm. as, as, and the people of America don't carry it as much as we Nigerians mm -hmm. blow our own things. There's insecurity in Nigeria, but it's not the worst country. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, most times when we sit here, we talk about, we talk to the government and berate them, say all these things. But we know that it's not only in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's just that we cannot say because it's happening in other, other places, parts of the it world. Has to happen mm -hmm. in Nigeria. We should have a better country for ourselves. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, the president Bryce Oligui Nguema of Gabon has invited Aliko Dangote to explore investment opportunities in Gabon cement and fertilizer sectors. Discussions between Dangote and Gabonese officials focused on potential contributions to Gabon's economy or economic growth through job creation, technology transfer, and industrial capacity enhancement. The invitation comes amid Dangote's challenges in Nigeria, including dispute with oil marketers and delays in licensing his refinery by the Nigerian government. Dangote insists his products meet international standards and remain committed to his uh, business ventures despite these setbacks. Mm. His office let another take. That's, that's what is happening. This is, I, I see, I, I, I knew that I saw this coming because when Nigeria is in the best place for your business to thrive, trust me, there will be other opportunities and all these other African countries they're waiting. Who doesn't want foreign investors to come into their country? Our own president is moving about looking for foreign investors. But look at this here now. Our own investor, our own locally made investor, you are, you are frustrating him. And then now potentially sending him to another country. So you see all of that revenue that we're supposed to be getting here. If Dangote decides to go set up something in Gabon or any other country, that's a loss to Nigeria, a huge loss. So news. what are we doing to ensure that our own manufacturing industry here, the people who are here, the people who, are, who come from Nigeria, made in Nigeria, trying as much as possible to grow your currency, how are you ensuring that you have a better and sustainable environment for your business to thrive? Not yeah. frustrating their, their efforts. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we have information that everywhere else that Dangote is operating a cement plant, their cement is cheaper. Mm. And that's because of the kind of leverage the government is giving to mm -hmm. him, the opportunities they're giving to him, because they know that he's employing labor mm -hmm. and all that. But we... On the other hand, huh. because I, I would say we, because uh, the leaders come from among us. Yes. And sometimes we we know these people, and because we are having some handouts from them, we don't want to say anything. And by mm. the way, when you say something, who are you going to say it to? Mm. It's like just reporting the person to himself. So if we continue in this way, and Dangote leaves, and Dangote, imagine he said someone, a fellow Nigerian, told him not to invest in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And now that person is having the last laugh. Mm -hmm. So how many of those people, even Dangote said he's not the richest man in Nigeria. He knows that there are people who have more money than mm -hmm. him. And if this statement is true, that means there are so many others that could have invested in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but they are afraid of the Nigerianness of Nigeria. The Nigerian factor. So that means we are losing revenue. That means we are losing uh, employment opportunities. We are losing everything. We are losing even that opportunity to be the giant of Africa. Yeah. Because these people, when they go to other countries, they are protected. Yes. Their money is there. They, they protect the money. The environment is good enough for them to do business. It's and they're flourishing. It's a sustainable economy. So they're taking our money to another place. And it is very worrisome. If the president wants to leave a legacy, he should address things like this. Mm -hmm. Let him make sure that business is so conducive for the people who want to do business here that we wouldn't need to even go Look to other countries. Look at interest rates that is being increased. We don't need to go to other countries for investment. We have people who could invest in this place. Yes. For instance, he talked about steel industry. He has washed his hands off. From, yeah. And you know how many people he could have employed. And the chain reaction, as it were, 
if he had that still and you know and you know people people are watching people are watching so if someone is seeing nigeria like this and seeing what dangote is I'm going through the person was like i'm not coming here because i don't think it's going to work for me if they can treat their own like this mm -hmm. how about me who's a foreigner and guess what even other people here would just be like you know what i do not i do not want any business here i'd rather go somewhere else you're hearing of other companies going to ghana mm. going to Liberia, going to different countries. The so called not... small countries. Yes. And the deputy mm -hmm. uh, uh, speaker of the House of Representatives said, said carrying placards is not the way like smaller countries. Mm -hmm. But these smaller countries are gaining what They're they should have. They're thriving. Meanwhile, the giant of Africa were losing everything. Mm. Well, I hope that the government will do what is needful because when you're thinking of growing your economy, there are certain things you have to look at. Fine, it might not be the most palatable situation. Maybe um, some people will want to take advantage of it. But at the end of the day, you don't know what you want. And yeah. when you know what you want, giant with you flat work. Muscles. <laughs> Very flat muscles. You can't even lift a brick. You're a giant. Oh, my goodness. All right. Our final top trending story says NDLE arrest Lagos wanted drug baron. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has arrested Suleiman Jimo, a.k.a. also known as Temo, the leader of the Mushin drug um, cartel. Temo had been evading arrest for years, and his capture follows the recent arrest of another drug baron, Joachim Mbonu, in Imo State. NDLEA spokesperson Femi Baba Femi stated that Temo's capture involved overcoming initial resistance and seizing large consignments of illicit drugs worth billions of naira. NDLEA's chairman, Brigadier General Buba Marwa, praised the agency's officer for their persistence and professionalism in apprehending Temo and urged them to continue their efforts against drug cartels. Well, Kudos to the NDLEA. Mm, that's, that's simple. Kudos mm -hmm. to them. That's well done. Them, let them do more. We hope that um, now that he has been arrested, others that are because because I'm sure he's working with people. There's a cannot, cartel. You cannot operate operate uh, alone in isolation. Mm -hmm. so there have to be other people. I hope that they have enough information. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think these people hurry too much to bring to the public what they have done, just to show that they are doing something if you arrest somebody there's a possibility that the people who he's colluding with will hear the information and then will That's run away yeah. some of them may not hear it as fast as that if you keep it to yourself for mm -hmm. some time and finish your investigations and mm -hmm. you you know gather all the people mm -hmm. that you need to gather you take them. i mean if you if you look at america that's how they take down you know cartels because what they do is bring one in ensure that that person ropes the other one mm -hmm. bring everybody in and then finally say okay we've been able to track down this cartel of people with evidence, with evidence. evidence. yes and not just saying oh i said one person and the other ones are scouring away anyways kudos to the ndlea for what you're doing we expect you to do more and ensure that um especially for drugs because drug is a menace in the society mm -hmm. when you look at gen z's when you look at several millennials as well, it's almost like a handshake. So if we're going to crack down the use of illicit drugs, obviously it starts from here because these are the people who are bringing it and making it accessible. Even school children, secondary school children are already taking drugs, mm -hmm. which is, is quite unfortunate. And when you talk about rehab, because I was having a conversation with my friend about that, rehab is so expensive. So imagine something that you start just as a joke. Or, you know, just playing with your friends and you're like, oh, let's take this, let's and take this stopped. type of drug. You start like that, but having to get off it is a problem. An average cost for rehab right now is about 3 million naira. How are you going to get that? 3 million naira for, for about 30 days, 30 to 90 days or so. And so if we know that we want to be able to have a society of quality thinking citizens, people who are sane, because drugs make you do all a lot of things you you don't have control of your mind and your body it starts from having to crack down these people who are bringing the drugs in and ensure that it is not as accessible to people so from school children and also raising awareness i think awareness is also important yeah, because very important. honestly I, your I mind for, for school children they do not understand this they th they think okay you know what is me just having fun and just playing but that's not what it is your your brain doesn't fully form till you are about 22. 
So imagine you being a child at 18 when your brain hasn't even fully formed and you're already taking these things. What happens later on is schizophrenia. Some people will tell you 18, 18 is adult. You're an adult, <laughs> but your brain doesn't Under fully form. Under the law, form. yes, you're an adult, but you know. Yes, even for your body, like your health right you start to have things like schizophrenia there's so many things that could happen to your brain brain damage brain injury because what you're doing is taking these things your your brain doesn't know which one is which so it acts erratically so it's important that i mean ndle is doing their job the people who can raise awareness need to raise awareness and ensure that we can cope this menace in society whenever we're talking about drugs don't get it twisted it doesn't end with uh, tablets that you're taking no, that's never the drugs we're talking that. about if you if you go that's a worrisome thing in lagos and ogun state uh is that if you wake up like some of us who are early risers you wake up as early as four o'clock there is there are people who have gotten up and they're selling. And guess what? The only thing they sell at that time sachet is alcohol. sachet alcohol. Mm -hmm. That is the thriving, thriving trade that, it's, <laughs> that is there. You won't find food. You won't find any other thing. You won't mm -hmm. find POS. So if you're stranded and your money is lost and you want to... <laughs> but you'll find to alcohol. But you'll find alcohol as early as four. Some of them, maybe they don't even sleep. You could find a, a, an entire market you know, where people come to and, mm. and trade, an entire market will have two, three, four people, and all of them are selling alcohol, and people are buying. And then when you're talking drugs, some people will tell you, ah, I don't take cocaine at all. But you're, you're rising and sleeping mm. with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And this also twists the, your reasoning mm. uh, ability and all that. That's yes. it, why it's called a drug. Mm -hmm. So you take something that changes your psyche, mm -hmm. changes the way you, you reason, and think and all that, even if it numbs your senses and all that, that is a drug and it's very dangerous, as dangerous as any other one that we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. So, NDLE, while you're doing this and talking about cocaine, talking about uh, meta, meta whatever, whatever name they call mm -hmm. them, just also know that drugs. Uh, in the guise of, of alcohol mm -hmm. is doing a lot to our children as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And we need to curb that. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.